Welcome back friends, welcome back to the homestead. We're um, in the greenhouse and in this video I want to uh, show you how I installed our fully automated watering system using components readily available from the internet. Um, if you're interested in the electronics side and coding then I did a video back in winter that looked at that in a bit more detail. I'll leave a link up here somewhere. Um, if uh, otherwise, um, in this video, we're going to concentrate on the installation. So it's more the kind of um, engineering, I suppose, and electrical installation. And I'll take you through all the jobs, um, starting with laying out the drip tape itself. And then we've got the kind of the, the more um, plumbing side, the pump, and finally the uh, electrical installation into the control box that we've already got made. So uh, let's dive straight in with the drip tape and then go from there. So um, first job is to lay out um, the drip tape and make it go flat. Um, I'm laying this out in a U shape, so it goes down to the end of the bed, around the corner, and then back up again um, to a stop. Um, and then I will put this stop fitting in, which simply screws in, and then we've got these right angled corner fittings to be able to do the U shape. And what I do is cut um, right in the middle between the two uh, watering nozzles and that gives you enough um, free play to be able to slip the fitting on and then tighten it up and these blue blue fittings work really well actually very really simple to install so this is 16 millimeter drip tape um, and then the next um, job is to cut the channel for the hose pipe to come from the water tank into the greenhouse and I'm using um, half inch hose for this. So uh, I, th I think 16 mil is five eighths um, and the hose pipe is, is half inch. Um, the 16 mil stroke five eight seems to be standard size for drip tape. Certainly the flat drip tape that I'm using for this project. Um, sometimes um, it's got different names as well. So water irrigation tape, flat tape. So, just a case of then installing the hose. Next, we're gonna put the pump in and we'll be able to do this. I wanna mount it onto a panel. Um, and I need to build the panel in readiness so that I'm gonna put insulation behind it. So I'm doing that now. Now you're probably wondering why is he putting a water pump next to the battery electronics? And the easy, simple answer to that is that's probably not where the electronics and the battery are gonna stay. It's a temporary fitting again until I get the insulation on, but that it is where the pump's gonna stay. So that's why for now they're next to each other and very soon I'll be putting installation, uh, putting the insulation in and then moving um, the electronics and the battery charge um, along a bit. So um, we're fixing the panel onto some, uh, fixing the pump onto some plywood and the fittings on the pump were very unusual, um, this high pressure pump and I couldn't get anything here in Latvia to to fit so I had to make something by using some um, three quarter inch hose to fit over and then use a pipe clamp to um, bring it tight and well watertight really and some PDFE tape as well and then from that I can then use a converter to move it down to the half inch hose pipe um, and then I'll be using quick fit connectors for all the half inch hose pipe fittings I got a bag of them, uh, a bag of 10, I think it was. Um, um, the pump itself is a high pressure pump and it comes on um, rubber legs because it vibrates quite a lot. Um, it's quite actually quite a noisy pump as, as you'll hear, but um, someone else joked that it was a, also a mole scarer and uh, I'm sure it does a good job of that. So it's just a case of measuring everything up now. Um, and fitting the pump. So the water will come in, go through the water filter and then through the pump and then out to the drip tapes. And we've got two beds, so we need a Y splitter to split the pressurized feed to the two beds, the two halves of the greenhouse. And then um, just using um, cable ties to keep this all tidy. And then it's a case of um, just digging the channels for the hose pipe to go across to um, the first bed um, 
Well, I'll make that cut and the quick fit, and then do um, use the connector to connect that to the quick fit connector. They don't. They were, they were a funny. They weren't a good fit, if I'm honest. Um, so I had to use PTFE tape and some PVC tape to make the ring. I couldn't get couldn't get the right size pipe clamps. Um, and you know, when you're out in the middle of nowhere like we are, you just can't keep popping along to the DIY store. You have to make do with what you've got and use a little bit of ingenuity. But it worked. Digging the second channel for the second bed for the half inch hose feed hose to go in. Ground's really dry as you can see. Um, Well, that's all done, so just a case now of connecting that back up to um, the Y piece and then um, our plumbing is done. And then tidy up um, the channel and the grass will grow back in time. So now we're going to do the electrical part, um, so into our control box, we need to take the 12 volt feed out um, from the relay or the override switch, which all the electrical work inside the box has already been done um, when I built the box, so it's a very simple process of just connecting the um, negative back to the 12 volt buzz bar and the positive to the um, fused output, which makes things nice and easy. And now I'll just um, crimp, measure up the positive and then crimp it, put a crimp on the end um, so that I can um, plug it into the fuse box output. And there we are all done on the electrics, well, for this control box. Uh, and now we just need to do the other end to bring the electrical feed to the pump. Now, unfortunately, the pump wires, the positive and negative come out as two single strand wires, um, which is not great, but it is what it is. So I decided to use a combination of heat, heat shrink uh, wrapping to try and make this um, as clean and tidy and waterproof as possible and um, leave the wire higher than the level of the pump. So um, if something any water did come out that it's less likely to be sprayed over. So using a combination of soldering and the heat shrink wraps. Um, which we can use a soldering iron to shrink that and it um, can give us a nice finish. Right, we're all done. <clears throat> in principle, wired up, plumbed in, so let's go and um, start the process of turning it on and stuff like that, but for now. But let's start the pump. Um, a bit noisy, but... It's self-priming, so it should suck it all through. There we go, let's come in there. Come up there as well. We'll bury that eventually. Once I know it's not leaking, we'll bury that underground. Oh, that's good. My, my main concern was there's going to be too much pressure and it was all going to blow. But it seems like that's not the case. That's not leaking, so that's good. This one down here is not leaking. Water coming out of there, over there, I can see. Is it coming out this side? Is, yep, coming out this side as well. So there's pressure down to this end. So 
think it's slowly there's nothing in here at the moment but I can hear the air hissing as it goes through it is water coming out of there Yeah, it's nice. It's a bit noisy, but it seems to be working. Okay, um, it's a day later now. Um, I've taken the system down offline for a day. I've reprogrammed the chip um, with some new features and specifically for the pump. Um, and it will now tell us whether the pump is on or off. Um, that information I don't particularly need. But for the sake of this testing, I'll leave it on here. Obviously, we know whether the pump is on or off because of the noise it makes. Um, and then what I've made is a wiring um, frame with a soil moisture sensor on one end. It's quite a delicate piece of kit, um, but it doesn't come with anything to protect it. So I've done it with nail varnish. I put a coating of nail varnish on there. Um, and then I'll probably put some PVC tape around it. And then the other end, is it's all wired up to be wired back into the system and then that will come out hopefully i'll be able to get a hole in there that'll come out down the side down the back and out to here where it will sense the moisture um i've calibrated i've calibrated the sole uh, moisture sensor for um this piece of wire and this setup because the lo um, the longer the piece of wire the more resistance there is and so there can be a problem with the reading I mean, then it's a case of fiddling around to find the right place to put it down there. So let's get that installed onto the board and then see um, if we can get that working. Okay, so um, now it's to, time to install the sensor, as I've just said. So I want to put it um, into the side of the box, which makes it a bit awkward for the drill because I can't get it around the other side. So a little bit of adjustment with the knife and it, uh, in she goes. Um, and then we feed in this um, sensor wires. So we've got um, positive and negative three volts and then the sensor actual data to be installed. So they need to be installed onto the ESP32 board, um, which provide us with that three volt feed. I don't know if these sensors work on five volts, but uh, I was advised best to use three volts. So that's what I'm doing. And then just a case of fitting it in and then do just dig a channel there for it um, to keep it neat and tidy, keep the wires out of the way. I'm, I'm not particularly happy with the with the ending, you know how how it looks at the end, but I don't can't think of any other way to do it really. Um, and I will tidy it up afterwards, but for the sake of this, getting it going. So the pump is now turned on, um, and we'll start. Um, pumping the water and here's a time lapse of the soil moisture increasing uh, until the pump turns itself off when it reaches the right level. So the pump's just gone off, you just see it on the time lapse, um, which is good. So now we have a fully automated watering system. There are a few things that I might like to add, like the end, the pump only comes on in the evening, <clears throat> would be nice, because we don't really want it pumping in the middle of the day um, when it's hot. But otherwise, um, fully automated watering system, fully automated ventilation, fully automated windows. Um, yeah, with all there, with pretty much a fully automated system. So that's how um, to do automation for your watering system. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you've got any questions, then leave them in the comments below um, or any general comments. I always like to hear your comments. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you found it of interest. If you did, plenty of other videos on our channel, which I'm sure you will find equally interesting. So that's all from me for now. Um, I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon.